Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokos Mystery. This will be part 257R. We're reiterating, continuing from the beginning of our Sunday morning message. And the title, of course, is Continuing in the Kingdom Gospel. This will be part 5R. In it we have uh, covered basically the scriptural revelation that a tremendous judgment is going to fall on the human race. And after this judgment has been pronounced, every human government will collapse. The current reality of human civilization will cease to exist. Men will be ushered into a totally different reality. All things will change. Within that, we went on to say that from obscurity, God is going to call an elite group to be freed from the bondage of uh, the current human order and brought into the revelation that he has waiting for them of their destiny in the heavens. At the same time, those that will be entrusted with teaching them the principles of the coming reality will also be released. All this will culminate in what's called the gospel. The gospel will be promulgated to the entire world. Turn to Matthew 24 verse 14. In this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. So the promise is that everybody on the face of the earth, men, women, children, human, non-human, are going to hear the gospel. The Bible also strongly indicates the gospel will be taught from the heavens in the same manner as we read, turn to Revelation, the 14th chapter. As we're turning, mm -hmm. how are the Luciferians affected upon hearing this proclamation from the heavens? With fear, of course. Mm. Does it affect them any more than giving them fear? No, not at this time. They're going to be too caught up in establishing their estates. Okay. Here we go. Revelation 14, and we want to pick it up, verse 6, and I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people. So we see this will be a repetition, but this will take place later on, the tribulation period. But every individual on the face of the earth is going to hear. No exceptions. Is it going to be an exact duplicate of what's heard at the beginning of the song? No. No, okay. because it's not going to be for the same group. Okay. Can you define the differences for us? Yes, we will. Excellent. Now, we want to establish that the gospel at that point it's taken out of the hands, the responsibility is taken out of the hands of humans <clears throat> who consistently falter and fail. It's going to be put in the hands of those that will take it and run with it to its completion. Now, 
at the time that the gospel is proclaimed, turn to Revelation 22. Verse 18. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. So the gospel is going to be proclaimed from the book of Revelation. That is the gospel. The book of Revelation, as it is in heaven in eternity, is the master plan for the Prototokis group. Do the humans receive the revelation, or the gospel I should say, in one, uh, one fell swoop, bam, like in one second? Or does it take time for the angel to actually read out the words? They're going to hear it in its entirety. Right. Doesn't mean they're going to understand it. That's where the teachers come in. Okay, what I'm asking is, how long does it take them to hear it? <laughs> the time, no, the time we're talking about eternity okay. outside of time okay. Okay. So it's, it's going to be projected into everybody's consciousness hmm. beyond time everybody's going to know and they're going to hear I imagine that they'll be standing still as they hear it well uh, it won't matter what they're doing hmm. because the father's determined you're going to hear it you're going right. to hear it Right. you could be falling out of a plane parachute to the earth right. you're going to hear it now, it's going to have an effect later on. What is that effect going to be? Remember, we said that it's going to be the main theme is going to be the establishment of the kingdom of God and the destruction of the five Luciferian kingdoms. So turn to Revelation. Uh, Revelation 6. Revelation 6. Verses 14, 17. And the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. The kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the chief captains, and the mighty men, Every bondman and every freeman hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. These are the five kingdoms, the five societies. Said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us in the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? This is the proclamation that will be preached when the gospel of the kingdom of heaven has been proclaimed. When this happens, they're going to remember that's what was said at that time. What is the beast stroke Antichrist doing at that point? He didn't come on the scene yet. Interesting, okay. He didn't come on the scene yet. So, I'm just trying to get a time fix. Have the ten given him any power yet in the subterranean region? He didn't come on the scene yet. Way before that. Well, I would say it's probably toward the end of the uh, first half of the tribulation period. 30 years ish in. Okay. Yes. Okay. yes. When he comes on the scene, these people are going to take heart. They're going to look at him as a savior. Because he's going to, he's going to unite the world in opposition to Elohim that they can look up now and see. He's going to shake his fist. He's going to do all this stuff. He's going to go forth and take out God's wife's VHS, two witnesses. He's going to do this, do that, do the right. other. And everybody's going to say, Whew. well, he's the answer to what we need. Right. So since Big he hasn't line. come on the scene yet, which of the Antichrists is in vogue at this time? About the sixth. Okay, all right. That's just the thing, the background. Sure. 
when the gospel is preached, this is going to be the principle that the Luciferians are going to understand the greatest. Because it tells them your judgment has been promulgated, your day is going to come. It's going to be the theme that the martyrs proclaim to these guys that cause them to be martyred. Revelation, the sixth chapter. Verse 9 and 10. When he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. Well, what is that testimony? The word of God is their witness. We are servants of Jesus Christ. The testimony, your time is short. The kingdom is going to be established by God and you're going to be overthrown. Mm -hmm. What's the result? Verse 10. They cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou now judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? Those are the guys that killed them, the Luciferian rulers, kings of the earth. Of course, white robes are given to them and they're told to wait. Main message is the kingdom. From the time of the beginning of sorrows on to the time of the second coming, it is the main theme. It is the theme of the book of Revelation. The kingdom, how it's established, who establishes it, the positions in the kingdom, uh, and basically the schedule of events that are going to take place. This is what the teachers are going to teach <coughs> those who hear and are converted and are <coughs> being prepared for <coughs> the gathering. I want to take a look at uh, some things dealing with this. Scripture teaches the prime teaching will pertain to the Lord as King of Kings and Director of the events leading to the establishment of the Kingdom. So the Gospel is going to preach the Kingdom, establishment of the Kingdom, Jesus Christ being the King of the Kingdom, and then the prototokis are going to give understanding of the principles dealing with the overall theme. Revelation 1, 5 to 7. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory, dominion, forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. This is a principle, foundation principle of the kingdom of the heavens. It's going to be taught to the prototokis students. It's going to be taught to those who are of a linear calling that so choose to hear at the time of the beginning of sorrows. They have to be prepared. Either that, or God wrote the book of Revelation for nothing. Notice what the Revelation says. Verse 1. <clears throat> the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show, to show, to show, unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John who bear record of the word of God and of the testament, testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things which that he saw. 
<clears throat> a scripture says it's a testimony to the churches. Well, how much of this do the churches understand? When the leaders of the churches are telling their people, don't even bother the book of Revelation because you can't understand it. If that's the case, if the rapture takes place, people will go to heaven, <clears throat> then this is written in vain. God wasted his time. God doesn't waste his time. People are going to understand this fully. The problem is that the, the people that it was written for have not come on the scene yet. That's our uh, 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 um, a prime directive. That's why we're being prepared. That's why we've been spared. That's why we're going to be used when this thing goes down. Now, having said that, <clears throat> we want to take a look at the principles. Scripture teaches the students will be taught the positions in the kingdom. Revelation 1. Now, Revelation 5, verse 9. Here we see the working of the teachers. Revelation 5, verse 9 and 10. <clears throat> they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us, redeemed us to God, by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation, and hath made us unto our God, Kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. How did they know that? You had a gospel message today. How many people know that when they accept Christ, they're going to be a king or and a priest, or a king or a priest? They know it because they were taught by the teachers. Exactly. Exactly. Is it being taught in the churches today? I think we can all attest to that. It taught, oh, you're a king and a priest. Yeah. Oh, you're a king or a priest. Oh, we don't know. We're going to wait till you get there to find out. <laughs> no. At the time of the beginning of sorrows, the teachers will be fully capable of teaching the principles of the kingdom from the book of the kingdom, the book of Revelation. How many students do you believe any teacher can teach at one time? I don't know, limitation. Okay. Because God's going to give you the ability to teach as many Super as He's right. put under yeah. your... Well, what I actually meant was in one sitting. Well, that too, there's no limitation. Teaching then, in the beginning of Saul, is going to be different than teaching now. Sure. Well, let's go on. <clears throat> Now, Scripture teaches each one that you teach will know the position he will occupy. Revelation 2nd chapter, verse 26 to 27. He that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, even as I received of my father. Now you would ask, how do you know who it is that's sitting under your teaching that's going to be a priest or an elder? How will you know? Because the Lord will have given you the authority to let them know. Turn to Matthew 24. As in the Holy Spirit will tell us. Sure. Yeah. This will come with the progression toward the glorification. Matthew 24. Fifteen of forty five to forty six.
Who then is a faithful and wise servant, whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household, so that's past tense, to give them meat in due season, that's future. Well, if you have been authorized to give them meat in due season, when the due season comes, you will understand what it is you are to give them. That's basic. And then you're going to go on from there to 46. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, he shall make him ruler over all his goods. And you go on to feed not only the earth, the people of earth, but the whole creation. That's the calling of the Prototokos teacher, Praise the priest, Lord. Praise the Lord. to feed the flock of God. Human, non-human, earthly, heavenly, wherever they are. Because the scripture tells us in Matthew that th this gospel is to be preached unto every creature. Every being that has the ability to understand, you will be given the authority to teach and preach. Yes? Explain to me one more time, Mr. Jones, why are we teaching non-humans the gospel? Because it pertains to them. They don't understand. Angels do not understand the master plan of God. So how are you going to understand it? Through the sons of God teaching them. Why is it necessary for them to understand? So they can serve the Lord to the understand. fullest. Serve the Lord. Okay. <clears throat> they serve Him now in a limited capacity. Because creation is in a fallen state. Mm. Then, when everything is restored, they're going to have to be taught how to serve them to the fullest capacity. Turn to Hebrews, second chapter. As we're turning, mm -hmm. will we be teaching them the non human? Beings, the fullness of the Father's master plan, because it would have been culminated by this. Sure. Mm. Well, they won't need to because it'll be completed. So then they don't need to know, in other words. No, they're not a part of that, but you're going to go on to teach them beyond that after the creation is restored the infinite things of God. That they, not only them, the, the, nobody knows at this time because it's been hidden. Right. So you're teaching now things that have been hidden from the beginning of the creation to people who have no understanding but may have a willingness to comprehend if they're given the opportunity. Hebrews 2nd chapter verse 5 For unto the angels hath he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak. So the angels are going to be disenfranchised. They are not going to be in control of the coming order of things in the creation. Do they all already know that that's coming? I believe so. Now turn to 1 Corinthians. We call chapter. that a demotion. Yes. Okay. Most definitely. It's a formal 1 Corinthians 6 chapter. Verse 3. Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more things that pertain to this life? So you're going to be the authority that instructs angels. Now this is not limited. It says, oh, you're going to just uh, judge the lower angels. No, you're going to be judging YHVH, the Dawn Star hierarchy, every created thing, because Matthew 24, 47 says you've been given authority to instruct every creation that God calls his 
property. When does YHVH lose the authority to be called God in the secondary creation? Glorification. Hmm, okay, so at that point, he's just the Nothing highest. change at the glorification. Right. But he's still the highest of the highest angels. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yes. But he is a group. Indeed. But there's still one who runs the group. <laughs> Turn to Romans, the eighth chapter. That tells you there. Y H V H. Stop. Romans eight. Verse 19. For the earnest expectation of the creature, creation, does what? Waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. What's the manifestation of the sons of God? The glorification, the adoption. Mm. At that instant, when that happens, you have an instant regime change. Correct. Grace told us about the, I think, alien who, when he was captured, said to the humans, you, know, you have no idea who you really are. Yes. Oh, it was, okay, you, you said, I'm sorry. At the point that he was saying that, does he know, as in verse 19? Sure. <laughs> so sure. everybody, every living being, including a blade of grass, knows more than humans do right now. Yes. That's so bad. It's Luciferians went out of the way to keep the humans ignorant. That's so depressing, Richard. <laughs> Tell me God. about it. Tell me about it. Even a blade of grass. So what I notice, as you read further down, it says that uh, they also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption. So they will be delivered as well. By the oh. sons of God, yes. Okay. That's, what That's you, Mariko. <laughs> you personally. Ah. You personally. You. <laughs> you liberate the creation. They're waiting for you. Yeah. Okay, yes. here I come. Okay. <laughs> yes. Praise the Lord. Yes, indeed. Slow but surely. Slow but surely. All right. <laughs> That's the inheritance of the sons of God. This is what you're going to teach them to begin your sorrows. Humans will not, you know, they, they, I'm trying to say, uh, to vocalize that humans will not accept that they've been robbed of their birthright. The size, I can't use any other word because I'm still, you know, a little bit human, as Georgia knows, <laughs> is so, the, the birthright is so huge, so, so vast. One, they couldn't comprehend it. And two, if they could, they wouldn't believe it. Yeah, because of the programming. Yeah. Which is a shame because it willingly allowed itself to be robbed. Just like Israel allowed itself to be robbed by the scribes and Pharisees of a priceless, uh, unimagined opportunity. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that Israel collectively will grasp that concept at the time coming? Yes. They will all know. Yes, they're going to know. When he returns, what they missed. And it says they're going to spend a long time mourning over it. <laughs> Everybody's going to go in their own corner and start weeping. And and, wailing. Yeah. Can, when you, they realize, can you imagine them chasing out the scribes and Pharisees of that day? <laughs> if they could get their hands on them, but the scribes and Pharisees are already under judgment. Okay. Now the main thing that you're going to teach, main principle, deals with the impartation of the spirit of prophecy. Because nobody can understand the book of Revelation unless they have the spirit of prophecy. Turn to Revelation 19, verse 10. And I fell on his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, 
that have the testimony of Jesus. Testimony. <clears throat> you find that word repeated many times. Testimony. What does it mean? It comes from a Greek term, <clears throat> matria, which means record witness. That's where we get the word martyr from. <clears throat> which have the testimony of Jesus. So he says, I have the record, the witness of Jesus. Worship God. For the, for the testimony, the witness, the record of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You have to have the spirit to enable the individual to comprehend and partake of the things of eternity. Would you say that having the spirit of prophecy requires first the spirit of uh, wisdom and revelation? It is the spirit of wisdom okay. and revelation. Okay, interesting. Just another term for it. Mm. Same spirit. I actually thought it was a, a, a something in addition to that. No. It's the same thing. Same thing. <clears throat> now, what we find Hmm. Are there, forgive me, sure, are there levels or extents of the spirit of wisdom and revelation? Yes. To the degree that you could not have, you have the spirit of wisdom and revelation, but you have problems with the testimony. Is that possible? No, the spirit of wisdom and revelation is a testimony, mm -hmm. but it operates on levels of glory. Uh, <clears throat> the uh, pillar angels have the spirit of wisdom and revelation. So do the temple angels, but the pillar angels are higher than the temple okay. angels. So is the implication that they can employ it to a greater degree? Sure. All right. But the custodians who actually have hold and keep the saints of this book, that's their whole job, don't have it to the degree that the pillar angels do. Oh, sure, they'd have to. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, okay. you'd have a limitation in the Revelation book. You okay. couldn't deal with it. You have to have it. Right. Yes. You're the only one I know that can answer this question, so I'm going to ask you, for, uh, Josie, is, can you give us an example of uh, the testimony of Jesus? An example of the testimony of Jesus? Yes. Uh, turn to Revelation 22. going to do Revelation 22 verse 16 <coughs> I Jesus have sent mine angel to testify why because God gave the Lord the testimony book of Revelation mm -hmm. the Lord gives the testimony to the angel why because the angel has the spirit of wisdom revelation the spirit of prophecy so it's not the giving by Elohim to the angel that is the testimony the angel really has the testimony which allows him to receive it allows him to receive the testimony yes he already has the testimony which allows him to receive the testimony. He has the spirit of wisdom and revelation which allows him to receive the testimony okay. and use it to okay. testify, okay. record. In other words, he's got the understanding and the ability to translate what he has been given. So you're referring to the ability to pass on prophetic revelation knowledge. Yeah, revelation. Okay. At the highest level. All right. If you don't have the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the spirit of prophecy, you can't do it. Okay. Yes. So is what we're talking about in another dimension? Is mm -hmm. it, it's a different yes. reality. Yes. But it translates into this reality if the person is open to receive it. Turn to verse 8, Revelation 22. Right. <clears throat> And I, John, saw these things and heard them. 
Well, how did he see him and he heard him? Because he had the spirit of the... The angel who has the spirit of wisdom and revelation showed up to him. But John also has the spirit of wisdom and revelation. To receive it. Okay, but not to give, not to impart, <laughs> no. of course. Okay. No. Well, hang on a second, hang on a second. Yes. He's told John, is told to write it down. Yes. Is that considered imparting? He writes down what he's received. Okay, it's so the receiving that's the imparting. Okay, okay. And John goes on to say, look what he says. And I, John, saw those things and heard them. Mm -hmm. So when he saw and he heard, how do you see and he's heard? Because the angel projects it to him. Right. In a reality. Right. John sees what the angel is showing him, and he writes down what he sees and what he hears. Mm -hmm. So John is just... Basically, because he's got the spirit in him, he's able to be in the presence of the angel. That's all. He can't see any of these things for himself. Right. Well, that was my follow-up question. Mm -hmm. Since we know that certain custodians have certain levels of the spirit, does the earthly counterpart, John himself, mm -hmm. have more of the spirit because, I'm just going to make this up, his heavenly counterpart is a custodian angel. Yes. Okay, so yeah. it translates from the, the potential. To, the potential to have more is there. How does he acquire or or, or um, maintain? Excuse me. Achieve the potential by allowing it to flow forth. Everything you have in you as a talent given to you, but if you don't put it in an operation, right application, it's dead. Okay, it's neutralized. Okay. Yes. So what I'm seeing, the picture I'm seeing is that. It's eliminating John from speaking and giving him the spirit of wisdom and revelation which speaks through him. No, John is just receiving what the one that has the spirit of wisdom and revelation is imparting to him. <clears throat> He's making it available to John to comprehend. Without that individual having the spirit of wisdom and revelation, he could never impart it to John. John would be ignorant. Okay. The question. Go ahead. The, no, go well, ahead. The, the follow-up question was: We understand now that the heavenly counterpart, the custodian, must have the spirit of prophecy to to impart yes. it to John. Right. Yes. If John did not have the spirit of wisdom and revelation, could he receive it? Not on that level. But you, are you saying he could receive it on the lower level? Well, he has a potential on the lower level to receive it on the lower level. These are beings that are in the heavens beyond John's capacity. Okay. The level John can't rise to right. this level right. at this point. He has to be glorified. His counterpart has to be glorified to get to the level that they are on. Now, notice what he says in Revelation 19. Yeah, verse 10. The angel says, I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, the prophets, and of brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So what he's saying here is the brethren have the testimony of Jesus so they can receive the revelation, right. but they don't have it on the level of those that are giving it. Okay. Could you describe that as the authority to distribute? Yes. Oh, but from a heavenly perspective? Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's part of Okay. Remember what the angel tells John originally, he says, come up here and I will show you. When you go to Revelation 17, the angel takes him to the city, I'll show you through the Spirit. Everything is through the Spirit. John says, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's sure. Day. So he's got the Spirit of Revelation and to enable him to go into the presence of these beings and receive, but he has not on that level that they are on because he has not risen to that ability. You will, you will, at the gathering. Mm. Could you say that the Father has or could give more of the potential that you mentioned to John to enable John to do the particular task that he's been called to do? Well, John would already have it. Okay. But it would be in his counterpart. Right. So would that be like adding more glory, more dunamis to the counterpart? No. 
Counterpart is everything that it is meant to be. But it's not, he hasn't yet merged. Exactly. It is a progression. When you get your inheritance, you progress higher yes. Yes. to a point where you can receive more. Yes. Become a permanent part of the heavens. Transit to earth and heaven if you so desire. <coughs> Glorification, you reach the zenith. Okay. It is a progression right. in which these things happen as we allow them. So since these beings, us, are so powerful, second only to our dear brother, the Lord Jesus Christ, excuse me, let me correct myself, Elohim, as I tell Georgia daily. <laughs> <laughs> Why would the Luciferians of their own volition believe that they can take out him on his own? Once he's glorified. Why do they think that they can take oh, him out? Oh, once he's glorified, yeah. they, they wouldn't touch him with a 10 foot pole. So, in other words, they, they know. Run from him. So, they, they know. That's why the dragon stands over the woman to devour the child as soon as it's born. Because once the child becomes glorified, the he doesn't have a chance. So you've just described that he has foreknowledge to some degree of his power the moment that he's born of the yes. child. Yes, yes. So at that point, he's clearly terrified. Certainly. Right. He, he's not only terrified, he's dealing with something he under, didn't fully understand. Mm -hmm. Nobody can understand it because it's been kept hidden. He knows things are going to happen, but right. he doesn't know the details and the degree to which they're going to happen. Because it occurred to me that if the creation is waiting with full knowledge of their uh, delivery, deliverance from the sons of God, then he must know. Satan sure. must know. Sure. To the same degree that they know is what sure. I'm saying. But it's still just an understanding that's nebulous, which they're going to try to keep from happening. Is his capacity to comprehend this messed up because of his state of corruption? Among other things. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, uh, his corruption. His corruption. Plus, he's ignorant of it. Mm. <clears throat> Turn to First Corinthians, second chapter. Father does all things wisely. Amen. Amen. Verse 7 and 8, 1 Corinthians, second chapter. But we speak wisdom, the wisdom of God in a mystery. When you speak wisdom to people that aren't on your level, it's going to be a mystery to them. They're going to understand what you're talking about. They have to have the same spirit level that you have to comprehend it. Would it be like Daniel receiving those things which are sealed until the end? Yeah, he had no way to comprehend it. Sure. Anyway, let's go on. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. So it was only revealed to the Prototokos before the foundation of the world. Then it goes on. Which none, none, none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So the Lord revealed to the Protochus things that the Luciferians were totally in the dark about. Before the foundation of the world, meaning before they fell. Because the Lord knew they would fall. And he knew if they knew, they would try to prevent it from taking place. So they, they have a nebulous concept at best. Christians don't know, even though they have access to the revelation. So much less the enemy isn't going to know. Yeah. Now, what we find here, the spirit of wisdom and revelation the spirit of prophecy, one and the same, is the key to all of this. When 
the beginning of sorrows takes place. We're saying the Christian world is going to enter into a new reality. The fourth empire is going to alter reality. We're going to enter into God's design reality. In that, you're going to enter into a time in which the spirit in you is going to be far more active than he is now. Why? Because the restraints are going to be loose to keep him limited now. The stupidity of Christian thinking will no longer be limited because the prototokes that are operating that won't be around to continue it. So you're going to have a free hand to speak truth and have truth received by people that are in the degree desire to receive it. In that respect, what we find, <clears throat> Scripture teaches, the teachers will teach to their students as they progress toward the gathering, the book of <coughs> Revelation, which is the student's inheritance. It is the inheritance of everybody that comes in your presence. That's why the Father is so intent on there not being any inter interference. Because this is his promise to his sons. And you, and you, and I, and those that are in this totally have a responsibility to make sure that they're going to hear everything that's intended for them so they can ultimately make a decision of what they want to do. But if they don't hear, they can't value it. They can't decide. <clears throat> and we are held responsible for that. Just like the teachers today right. are held responsible right. for not teaching the whole counsel of God to the people that God sends into their presence to be taught. So we should understand that a, a teacher who by their actions chooses, whether they know it or not, to not receive 100%, as you've just uh, uh, outlined, is setting, them up, setting themselves up for a fall for themselves and removing understanding by default to those they're supposed to teach. That teacher is setting himself up for a judgment. Mm. And the people under him are going to... Um, fall under a judgment as well. Because they're also instructed to pursue it whether or not they're being taught it. So we should understand that to be a, a teacher in the manner that has been described here, one has to remove themselves from the world completely. There is no in ands, oh, ifs, yes. or buts, yes. no yes. Uh, residue, no, you know, I, I still want to do this, but I don't want to do that. No, no, not at all. You've got to be in this thing fully. Mm. Because it's a 24-7 with a Spirit is consistently giving you things to give, giving you things to give. You enter into an ocean of revelation. And in an ocean of revelation, you're consistently ingesting things that are pertaining to <clears throat> eternity. Uh, we're preparing ourselves for ultimate glorification, as well as those that we're teaching. What do you say to the apprentice teacher who's walking the path of Matthew 24, 45 to 47 regarding wanting to continue, I'm going to use the word socializing with friends of uh, a particular organized religion church? I would say <clears throat> be led of the spirit, get out of that thing because it's going to limit you. Why would it limit that person? Because it's not going to allow that person to receive the whole counsel of God. Okay. Do you believe that in our studies that we've already received that instruction to do exactly what you've just said? Get out of there. Yes, what we, re what we receive now, what I would pass on, <clears throat> is if you're in that type of a situation, you devote all your time to pursue the scripture. Number one, you're going to surpass everybody in that organized situation. You're going to be able to understand things that they don't even consider. Number two, as the Lord leads, He may lead you to stay there because there may be somebody that's interested in what you have received okay. that you can give them. Okay. But ultimately, there's going to come a time when the Lord says, depart. 
at some point. Yes. And so therefore we should understand that the person who is in that situation has to be cognizant of the fact that they are open to hearing things contrary to what the Lord says. Certainly. And that may imply limitation. Certainly. Well, in that situation, when the person has truth, the idea is you stand on the truth you know. Mm. You don't accept the, the, the distortion that you're hearing. Right. Because you know what to be true is true. Truth cannot be uh, neutralized. Truth cannot be gainsaid to be put down. Mm. Truth will always remain truth, and it will shine the light on that which is not true. Mm. And in that respect, <clears throat> again, the idea is to be open to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Organized religion, by virtue of the fact <clears throat> that it is positioning itself to stand in opposition to God, the ways of God, just like ancient Judaism stood in opposition by its traditions, its unwillingness to pursue truth ultimately wound up <clears throat> in a situation where and when it came under judgment. I want to point out that the person in that situation will, because they want to stay with their friends, obviously say that they're being led by the Spirit to stay there. You'd have to know that, you'd have to believe that in your heart by evidence. What are the evidences? Whatever it is, if you have a relationship, that relationship had better bear fruit. Okay. Okay. Otherwise, it's not a fruitful relationship from God's perspective. Uneven, unevenly yoked. Yeah. Bear fruit of the words. Yes. Amen.